And I think it's time to answer some questions if there are questions. So Yes. Thank you so much, Mishi. I would like to read some of the comments here. Um, overwhelming appreciation from our colleagues in CNU. I would like to read this one. Ang liti sa kinaadman o sa kamaundanong pagpaambit, Doc Inday Michelle, ang akong mainitong pagdayig. Diba? Uh, really love hard. Love, I know, bisaya. <laughs> Yes, oh, that's from Dr. Makan. Being oh, injured now. Oh, Dr. Makan was also one of my professors in college and sad to say there have been many times when he has closed the door for me because I come to class late. Sorry, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Doc. I hope I have made up for it today. <laughs> I hope you will have time to read all these um, positive comments from our colleagues and they are so happy of your um, you presentation so much, this afternoon. By the way, um, you should comment more because Mamishi is used to being viral on Facebook with more than 20,000 shares and comments. So, Ana Dr. Chan, Garcia, I think it's time to just go to the questions. Okay. First question, I think this is from Mr. Leo Pongos. Uh, Mamishi, do you have a consistent lesson design all throughout the whole module? Or is it safe badaw, to stick on the four, four A's lang? for the um, modules uh, parts? Uh, when I, I've never written a full module because usually in the university, when you're asked to write a module, you're a team. So we have one module for extension. I remember it from the College of Teacher Ed, but we divided the units, uh, different units. So I've never written a full module, but if I were to write a full module, I would suggest that we keep the parts consistent because psychologically, um, and it's just not psychology, but we, we see sometimes the whole is, so, uh, uh, the, the, oh my gosh, my psych teacher is gonna, gonna be so sad about my remem remembrance of the lesson. Dr. Gakasan, please do not disown me. But for just out psychology, but we, we remember things more when they are more whole, I think. No? So if the format is the same, even the formatting, even the icons, when they are the same, there is a sense of continuity, there is a sense of wholeness. And so it facilitates learning, no? But so I would suggest a consistent format, but then it should not limit you if you feel that you can provide more activities, but the goal is always the learning of the students. Okay, so I hope that answered your question, Mr. Pongos. I, I have another question. This is from another single, actually, from Dr. Renario. What positive drivers can you further suggest to us future virtual learning teachers to promote empathy, trust, encouragement to learners despite the physical distance and online connection barriers? How can we psychologically prepare our e-learners? Okay, so I have, I actually planned on um, taking up guidance and counseling no? because that is also one of the many things that I would like to learn no? and how to be more empathetic with our students but top of the mind my top of mind answer would be that you listen to them so in the college of teacher education we are currently um i, I think uh yeah i know not, not the college of teacher ed but i think the school is currently um trying uh, we have um uh, experimenting on a uh, a mentoring program which in that case i am mentoring 10 students right now and what we do is we just talk to them so sometimes i know not sometimes but the way to really understand our students is simply to talk to them and actually listen to them so when we say kamusta naman ka and then we have to stay and listen not kamusta naman ka and seen because you know being seen is very painful like right dr garcia so we yes. should not seen, we should not seen zoned our learners so when we ask them how they are and then they answer when they say um do you find this activity difficult we allow we listen to to their feedback and what parts are they difficult and so it, i am not saying that we should lower no, my students would always say that um they like they like me as a teacher but they don't like me as an assessor or they don't like my way of giving tests or requiring requiring so much from them but then I think it's a balance of challenge and support. So we just ask them constant communication and dialogue with them and learning their language. So that is the difficult part. But I think Dr. Renario is very good with that, you no? Know, because I have been also her student and she is an outstanding teacher. 
So I think um, just the communication and just understanding where the students are. That's my answer, Doc Garcia. Okay, thank you. Um, I think Mr. Ontoy has a question, but still typing. So while waiting, um, I would like to um, summarize some of the key points that you have raised this afternoon, like um, modeling as a powerful tool. We should serve as model to our students, like the excitement of learning should always be there, even though we are, we are, we are already teachers. Then um, the best way to test that you have made a good interactive module is when the module will be able to represent yourself and replace you eventually. So it's, it's more of, I, am I right if I say it nga, the module should immortalize the teacher? Diba? That's, I, 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 uh, you know, I think in a way, you know, I think we, we will never be replaced by technology. So that's why we have to use technology and not, you know. Yeah. Okay, I, I, the question is already here. In a face-to-face -face classroom, is it easier to gauge if the students are getting anxious or bored? In the case of interactive module and online learning, how do we gauge it? Or should it be an issue? How do we respond to that in a timely way? Uh, that's a difficulty there. No, the, the limitation is um, timely feedback. It would have been possible if both teacher and the students have strong internet connection and synchronous classes can be done because um, there is timely feedback. No, so so because we assume that when we do or when we make self learning modules, there is a lack of um, internet connectivity that um, allows for immediate feedback. My answer to that would be we have no control over the anxiety and the boredom of the student as he or she answers it. So we have to look at the the I think the struggle for the teacher there is to motivate the students outside um, outside of just feeling excited for the work. It's like motivating them by um, navigating from the difficulty. And like, for example, you are not there for the anxiety, but the way you write the module could assume that. For example, you can say, this may trigger anxiety on your part, but remember that. Or you can integrate in your module process. Like, for example, if it's, for example, if it's bored or you're anticipating that they will be bored. So if there's so much to be read, you can say after 20 paragraphs, you can say, take a time to pause. No, so you integrate in the design of your module, uh, preemptive measures. So it's like Dora. Now, like say, where is the map? Point the map, but you don't really know where the map is. But so we, we don't have control, but at least in the design of the module, there are pauses, there are breaks, and then they anticipate the, the needs of our learners. So that I think is just my answer, top of my mind answer. Yeah, so. I, I agree. I, I think that that answer also answers the question of Sir Ray Ferdinand Gagani because he was asking about um, automatic feedbacking. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. We should put process for our mental health. We are not only concerned of ourselves, but also of our students. So uh, here is another question from um, Leslie Cabras. If there are three teachers teaching the same subject, is it advisable to use one module? Mm. So I think that the university is gearing towards that. And um, there are advantages and disadvantages for having a team decide on one module because one, number one, the, top, the number one there is that um, you tap the expertise of more than, more than just one. So imagine if there is, you're an expert and then you work with two other experts, then that could help enrich the module. Second is that there is a sharing of work. So it is possible that out of the three, if one person is really good in writing, then he or she can decide on the, all of you can decide on the design, but on the work you can share. So one person can do the writing, the other one can record the lecture, the third one can set up the Google Classroom. So usually the youngest and the most um, technologically advanced of the three, okay, you just set up the Google Classroom because remember the Google Classroom can be shared by all. I will do the writing, then you will do the lectures, and then we design one learning kit. 
okay? But siguro the struggle there is because each teacher has a different perspective of how to attack the lesson. So that's the, diff that's the challenge there. And maybe one way to address that is to, in a way, decide, you share your practices and then decide which one is best. And we have to, in a way, compromise. So if for unit one, we follow this activity, then we can prepare a backup activity so that by next semester, when we evaluate the module and we find this activity is confusing, we can change that activity to another activity. So overall, I think it is advantageous when a group of people does the module for a single subject because in the end, the goal is just one. No, but there are things that we have to navigate in order for that to be successful. So that, that's my answer, Sir Lau. Yeah, sige. Kanang mamishi na pag tayo mga questions here. Um, this is from a mother, Mani, si Ma'am Nat Nat, Natibida de la Torre. Is self-learning module applicable in grade K to grade 3 since we have teachers that have kids in this level? I hope makarelate ra ka bisag wala pa kay kid, no? La <laughs> ima um, so my my answer I am not an uh, an expert of everything but I think my answer to that it's very difficult to teach certain things using a self learning module especially if it's kindergarten I think the ECE Dr Navarro is here listening etc so uh, and all the other experts in ECE there are some skills that are very difficult to teach in self learning uh, self learning module my example is for college because it it is very much applicable for independent college learners no but it's a different different level of challenge i i would not advise it for the uh, um, early childhood and the can uh, grades one to three i think no maybe the person who will benefit much from it is the parent no mo bright ang ginikanan dili ang ang bata no so this might just be applicable for high school at certain levels and then um, senior high and then um, college and graduate school yeah sige ma'am nat when mommy she will have her own kids maybe answer na nat niya but we have another question from sir alambra uh, how do we integrate technology in the interactive module? Mm, it's a very good question. So how you can integrate technology is that one, you can give the links to your Google Classroom. So you don't, uh, you prepare all the, the um, supporting supporting materials like your videos, your recordings, your PowerPoint presentations, your uh, if you can design an interactive uh, module on the internet, you can give the link and then you can include in your module, visit this site for to access this one or visit your Google Classroom and then you can access this one. So in my last, ex in my second example, you can write um, the references at the end of the module there or maybe in the opening activity you say, look for the story uh, because, uh, no, sorry. Sir Alambra is in mathematics, so maybe you can say, look for the lecture on um, calculus as, they, as uh, shared by, for example, there is a very good lecture from Harvard or a good lecture from Oxford, and then you can give, you write the link there on your module, and then we assume that the students will look for it from the on YouTube and then how can we check if they really listen to it is to make sure that your questions will not be easily answered if they didn't look at the video so you can put um, it as optional items on your um, on your module and then or maybe put all the materials on your Google Drive and then tell them um, ask, uh, ask, um, Supporting documents or materials or resources are available at our Google Drive. Share, uh, enter your email address at cnu.edu.ph and look for the material that you need or something to that effect. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but the best question siguro for the math is what happened to X and answer Y, right? <laughs> but we have here a question um, okay. from <laughs> Dr. Dr. Isok, um, isn't this highly individualized that requires limited learners? In a class, there are 35 learners, maybe a little more, but with multiple classes. How do you deal with this? Should it also emphasize self-checking activities with self-test as well? 
Yes, no, that, that, that's, those are two um, assessment tools that could be very, very useful. Like for example, at the very start, some modules have actually pre-test and post-test, so it's not in my example, but you can do that. There is also, before you introduce a lesson, you can do a self-check. And then maybe at the end, they can also answer something very similar. So in a way, my example um, is very specific to a group of learners, but you can expand the characteristics of your learners and then redesign it. So it will cater to more students. So this will, of course, um, the experience, for example, no, of teachers who have taught so long in a subject, they have a better perspective no, than I. So, if you, if given your experience, you can be a better judge of expanding the content as it may be very limiting as my experiences are also limited as a teacher. So as, as you teach and as you gain more experience, you have a greater understanding for your students. And then your module will also expand to be able to address the needs of more learners. So that is very much possible, sir, and the best um, judge for what activities to be undertaken is always the teacher. So if the teacher believes that this is best for their students, then they have to put it in and then just evaluate it later on if their beliefs are justified by the performance of their students. Yeah, I agree. So um, I think the question of Sir Glenn Pesole has already answered sa katong ganitang mga... Um, we have here a question from Miss Mary Flor Villaruel. Ganhanta siya mo ask, how are we going to integrate the physical performance of students by using module? Can we utilize other platforms or media like Messenger or YouTube? Can we address this in the PE class? Yeah, this a definitely. For the yes, PE. I would answer definitely. For example, your instructions can come in your module, but your submissions can be done online. For example, in this course that we are doing with UP on remote teaching and learning, we are asked to make a strategic plan and or we are, that's one output and the second output was a um, briefing paper for the board of regents so we are we make that outside the module so that's we make that in microsoft word etc and then we have a submission portal so our activity we do it outside the the, the interface but then we submit it in the portal. So for example, if you, I, I were to suggest, although I am not a major in physical education, so if I were to suggest, you can ask the students there to perform an activity and then they can record it and then you just send, tell them to send it to your email or to your Google Drive or to your whatever platform it is you are um, using. No, But again, to consider also um, the capacity of our students and the resources. So maybe at the onset, if it requires technology, if it requires internet connection, at the start of the SEM, you can already tell them that these are the requirements so that they have more or less five months to look for the resources that they need. So that, for example, if I don't have internet connection right now, it's okay because I don't need to pass it today. So, but at the start of the semester, for example, September, I know that I will be asked to perform something recorded on video I have five months to plan how to do it. And then you just put there, maybe not on your module, but on a separate course description or your course syllabi, you can put your email address and then you can just put in their module, perform the following record, your, uh, your performance of the following steps or perform a dance using, um, you know, perform salsa, perform tango, etc. record it and then send it to my email address, not later than, so the instruction is in the module, but the submission can be outside the module. That's it, sir. Yeah. So but, um, when, when they send, reminder ni Dr. Ovido earlier is do not sing zone your students. Kay sakit ma sing zone. Mamisha, I think the question na, 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 kwa na diri ni Dr. Pisole ang yang question. Yang, yang, yang question mo is how the feedback being, being done between learners answers and teachers, especially when learners get a wrong response. You, you explained earlier that you put pauses in between just to check if okay pa ba sila. But here, um, in the assessment, of if the, in the awareness, I think it's part of the 5A, because awareness, how will you respond 
or ang student lang ba ang mag-co-uncheck sa yung cell? Um, I think that the teacher can arrange his or her class depending on his or her um, resources and the resource of the students. For example, although it's totally remote, te remote teaching and learning, you can, um, you can arrange a synchronous class from time to time if that's possible. You can also um, give um, a timetable, for example, all submissions at this time and then and all papers will be returned at this time so that the students will know when to expect feedback because students will always expect, right, Terlao? We always expect and it's very painful when we expect for something and it doesn't come. So when you promise to return the outputs of the students at a certain time, then you have to meet it or at least tell them that it's not possible. So you just arrange it with your students. I think it's safe to say that there is no one size fits all for all teachers, for all students, and for all courses. That is why we have to look at all our options and weigh all our options. And then we decide what is best for our students, considering what we can do, our resources, considering what our students can do and what their resources are. And we try to meet halfway. We learn to compromise, you know, like all relationships, you need compromise in order to be successful. If you don't compromise, then one will feel disgruntled. No, it, one will feel that I can see Kaiusia. No, so we have to make sure that both parties have are able to communicate and to reach the learning goals without sacrificing the mental health and the general welfare of both faculty and the students. Yeah. Wow. Spoken like nakasuway good of relationship. No. <laughs> so, I think wala naman tayo question so far. Um, uh, nag nagkuhan man ko ang mga tao dili mamishi, ga, ga tali sila sa ato ang kuan scores. Oh, so, okay. Who is winning? So far ako. <laughs> <laughs> but but we are reminded nga I know it will be very difficult for some especially those nga who are not really used to writing modules but mamishi um navigated as through the the interactive module development nga dili siya difficult for everybody like for us in nursing or other mga departments nga who don't have any idea of kana uh, writing modules but remember mami she told us though it's kapoy make sure that it's worth it diba and we should always answer the um the uh, remember this nga ang masakit at mapait ay nagiging kaakit-akit depende sa bakit so it's always okay to get hurt you know we can never please everybody especially our students they, they yes, can sir, no. i agree when with that with that said you don't have to search for the x i think you have to find the y correct right? in uh, other words you stop searching for the x and you just focus on the y it's the y that really matters in the end yes you agree sir lawrence you can never find your x x so why lang sa so i think um we have one more one more question, okay, Pamanta, Ma'am Daisy, no? Um, how can we prevent similarities of answers from the students' output daw from on their online module? Yeah, like what I said a while ago, as much as possible, we don't ask questions that can be, um, that, 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 uh, where the answers can be taken from the internet or from the module itself, no? So, for example, you ask for their opinion, ask them to create a work plan, ask them to create um, strategic action that you can ask them to write a letter you can ask them to address a problem so that their answers will not be exactly the same however I will not also throw away the need for comprehension check so if, if we just need a balance although we cannot we will not we will we will never know if the students just copy the answer but it's a risk that we can take. No, it's very important to take risks. So we will never know, but we take risks. And then we hope that our students understand that when they cheat, in the end, it's going to be against them. No, it, they will become cheaters. And we don't like cheaters, the Basar Lao. So we want to build honest and um, independent learners. So, so my answer to that is you ask activities and questions that will be answered by critical thinking. There are so many activities given by um, Dr. Inoshan in the last webinar. No, very rich resource if you just look at the PowerPoint that he has given, although it's very specific for, let's say, social studies, but you can just edit it to apply to your course 
and that will be difficult to copy because it will it will really require them critical thinking and only through critical thinking can you make good choices so mo, before ka mo pili magunahon na gid ka sir law no kanang dili pwede na first come mo na na imong nahunaon an siya na siya na more mauna jud no but you have to think good carefully and weigh and use all your critical thinking powers before you decide on your choice and that choice is going to be hopefully the best choice so that's that's my answer sir yeah so uh ako na ning i-end ang Q&A kay makalabot yes. ni Mommy Shi sa kung points ani yes sir so kung bakit ba dapat ang duha so ang what what is important here is that when we write an interactive module, we become technical storytellers. Yes, so, it's important. It's it's just writing something that you usually do in the classroom. You you put into words what you should have done face to face. And um, remember again that um, make sure that if you really love teaching, no matter how hurtful, how um kapoy the work is it, it is always worth it so can i see um applauses on your screens for our amazing speaker for this afternoon uh, thank you again once again for the opportunity and let me just say that it is a mark of true greatness no for everyone to show our willingness to learn from someone uh who may not be as experienced as they are no so it is uh, i am truly in the midst of people who are great so i am very grateful no, for this opportunity thank you also sir lau for a very enjoyable question and answer activity yeah thank you so much so you can keep your applauses coming in our chat room and on your 